Coming up this week, Perplexity launches a series of new MCP connectors, a sneak preview of what one exec is calling the biggest launch in history, a secret new project is cloning SaaS products to train AI agents, and major new studies from Anthropic and OpenAI reveal exactly how we're using AI tools today. Stay tuned for all of that and more, and if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, Perplexity has launched a new set of MCP connectors, which allow you to connect to third-party apps like Calendar, Notion, Linear, and GitHub. Some of the use cases that it suggests you might want to use these connectors for include getting a summary of your upcoming meetings and converting documents into linear projects with subtasks that can then be automatically assigned to the relevant product team member. So here's a simple example of me using Perplexity to check what's coming up in my calendar. Elsewhere this week, Notion is set to launch what one of its employees describes as its biggest launch in history. And if these leaks are to be believed, then the launch could be the arrival of a new AI agent that comes with a bunch of connections, including MCP support, code gen, Slack, and others. This leak suggests that the agent will be launched under the strap line, you assign the tasks, and your agent does the work. Further footage that was leaked on X suggests that Notion builders will be able to create these AI agent personalization templates and then share them and potentially sell them on the Notion marketplace. And an understanding of agentic workflows was recently listed by Google's head of Gemini as one of the core product skills that he believes that less than 75 people in the world currently have. And if you're interested in learning more about agentic workflows, then check out the latest knowledge series over on Substack. In this post, I take a look at the step-by-step -step processes and technologies involved in agentic workflows, from inputs through to planning and decision-making, to memory and execution. I also explore why tools like Langchain and Langgraph are now becoming the leading tools for AI agent builders and how these technologies might be used in the wild. So if you're interested in learning more about agentic workflows, then check out the latest knowledge series over on Substack. And on the topic of new agentic technologies, this week Google launched a new protocol for AI agent purchases. Now this is called Agent Payments Protocol or AP2, and it's designed to be interoperable interoperable, I can never say that word, between different platforms. For product teams, this could be an important addition to the payment UX stack. And you can read the full AP2 spec on Google's official GitHub project page, but here's how it works. In a typical transaction, the agent builds a cart, the merchant signs it, and then the user approves and signs the mandate. The transaction is then executed with a clear audit trail for accountability. Coinbase has confirmed that it is one of the early adopters of this new protocol, and they've built a proof of concept that you can see over on their blog that uses stablecoins. This week, Visa confirmed that stablecoin use is actually up 4x on the year, which suggests that stablecoin adoption could play a big role in the adoption of agentic payments. Meanwhile, Figma has unveiled a new feature called Prompt to Edit, and as you might expect, this new feature lets designers use a conversational prompt to make edits in design files. Now the demo looks pretty impressive, and if it does indeed work as well as the demo suggests, then this could potentially make editing files much easier for our product teams and lower the barrier to entry for design. For designers themselves, this may have some unintended consequences where, as with vibe coding, folks from other disciplines take it upon themselves to make quick edits without necessarily running it past the person who is traditionally responsible for those changes. Stick around for more on the unintended consequences of vibe coding later. In other news, YouTube has launched a series of new AI features, including the ability for creators to generate shorts using Google's VO3 models. AI-generated videos will be labeled, but the arrival of VO3 into shorts does risk the AI sloppification of video content. Other announcements at YouTube's event this week include a brand new AI assistant called Ask Studio, which is targeted to creators and allows them to ask questions about the performance of their content. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use, and we'll start with a tool called AI Apply. And fresh from the news that OpenAI is building a job application product, this product lets you use AI to apply for jobs on your behalf. They say that users are 80% more likely to get hired faster if they use AI Apply, and it helps candidates throughout the entire job application process. So from optimizing your cover letter through to your resume and then auto applying to jobs that are appropriate to your experience. So if you're currently in the job application process, then check out AI Apply as a tool that you might want to use to augment that process. Next is a tool called Oboe. 
And this was actually created by the founder of Anchor, which was previously sold to Spotify. And this is a new AI learning app that you can use to teach yourself pretty much anything. All you do is you input a prompt telling Obo what exactly that you'd like to learn, and then it will put together a tailored course based on your prompt. So in this example, I've asked it to create a course on AI agent payments, and this is what it produced. The course includes a mix of deep dive articles, podcast episodes, and flashcards and quizzes that you can use to test your knowledge. So if you're interested in exploring new ways to learn new topics, then check out Obo. And the final product for this week is a product called Whisper. And we've seen some similar products like this in the past, which is a desktop AI that can see your screen and then assist you depending on the task that you're working on. The difference with Whisper is that it analyzes what you're working on and then anticipates how you might want to use it beforehand. So for example, if you're working on a product roadmap, it might expand some sentences into full paragraphs. Or if you've got a meeting about your product's performance, then it might bring up last year's case studies, along with a bunch of other different scenarios, including research, coding, and your daily routines. So if you're looking to augment your daily workflows with a little sprinkling of AI, then check out Whisper as a potential product that you might want to use for that. Now let's move on to some data and trends for the week. And one of the big stories from this week is that Gemini has officially overtaken ChatGPT in the mobile app store. As you can see here, Google Gemini is sitting proudly on top of the US app store charts with Google's AI studio lead, Logan Kilpatrick, posting the chart on X saying slowly then suddenly. But it's not all good news for Google this week. New data shows that the DAU-MAU ratio, in other words, the percentage of monthly active users who are also active on a daily basis, is actually falling for Google, but rising for ChatGPT. As you can see from this graph, there is a steady decline of Google search users from around 27% back in January 2023, down to just 25% in August 2025. ChatGPT, which is represented with the orange line here, has been steadily increasing during that same time period. What this data doesn't show, though, is Gemini usage. And since the Gemini app is now performing exceptionally well, this suggests that plenty of Google's users are substituting traditional search with Gemini and AI mode. This week also saw the latest version of Anthropic's brilliant economic index report, which explores how Claude AI is being used and its societal impact. Now, this is a fascinating read if you're interested in understanding how users are interacting with AI right now. And some of the key takeaways from the report include the fact that in the US, 40% of employees now use AI at work, which is doubling in two years. The share of directive conversations has increased from 27% to 39%. And in this context, directive refers to situations where users give Claude a clear specific instruction or request and Claude completes the task independently without needing much further input. In other words, more people are using Claude to automate rather than to collaborate with than ever before. And coding is still the dominant use case for Claude users, with 36% of all tasks being used for coding. OpenAI published its own equivalent report on how people use ChatGPT this week. And what's most striking to me is that just 4% of ChatGPT's users are using it for coding tasks. So in this graph, you can clearly see the big difference between the percentage of usage around coding for both of these products. In one sense, you could interpret this as good news for both companies. Given that Claude has positioned itself as a coding super tool, it's reassuring to see that many of its users are using it for this. And for ChatGPT, as you can see in this diagram, the sheer spectrum of different use cases suggests that it has firmly cemented itself across many different user groups. But while both of these companies are currently being used for a bunch of different types of tasks. According to a new report, both Anthropic and OpenAI agree on their controversial next focus area, which is cloning SaaS apps to train AI agents. In a new piece over on the information, they say that both OpenAI and Anthropic have secretly been building cloned versions of major SaaS products to train their agents on how to use them. So in this case, what's happening is these companies are building massive clones of major SaaS products like Salesforce, and their agents are then being trained on how to use them as a human would, with the ultimate goal of replacing the workers who currently use them. And the impending threat of AI agents in the workplace is now being reflected in new surveys of leadership teams. According to a new study from MIT, almost 70% of top executives believe that the introduction of AI agents requires new management approaches. And a new piece on the Wall Street Journal this week reflects this too, with one COO admitting that he's going to have to rewire his whole company. 
one of the emerging new trends to accommodate AI agents is to increase the size of teams with flatter org charts that include a mix of business people alongside traditional product roles, including engineering, product management, and design. And finally this week, whilst much of the chatter is around how AI may be removing jobs, thanks to the rise of vibe coding, a new type of job is now emerging. And these have been described as the vibe coding cleanup specialists. So these are engineers that have been hired to clean up the mess made by vibe coders. One engineer who's landed himself a job as one of these cleaners says that most of these vibe coders are either product managers or salespeople. Something to think about before the next time you vibe code an app at work. And on that note, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.